Today, we're going to answer the question, how decentralized is your blockchain really? And stick around till the end of the video because I'm going to share with you a couple of updates that Mr. Richard Hart has made to the crypto ecosystem, making it more resilient. So stay till the end. But first, we're going to talk about decentralization. Now, there's two types of decentralization, technical and economic. Every coin is economically centralized. And that simply means some people have more coins than others. But one of the best metrics by which to judge if a blockchain is actually decentralized from a technical point of view, which is much more important, right? Because we're talking about can people actually shut it off, right? If it's decentralized enough, these protocols are censorship resistant and they can't be turned off, which is the biggest fear, right? That's why crypto was invented. That was the reason crypto was invented to get rid of middlemen. And so decentralization is a spectrum, okay? Things aren't, it's not one or zero. It's not yes or no. It's how decentralized is it? And again, what really matters is the number of validators in the ecosystem because they keep the chain up and running. And in order to shut a blockchain network down, the reason it's nearly impossible to shut a lot of these networks down is because there's thousands of validators. Well, sometimes less, sometimes more. And when you're dealing with distributed software, decentralized software, long story short, it's basically impossible or nobody really cares to take the time to knock on hundreds of thousands of doors and turn off people's computers, not only in the United States, but in countries worldwide, because crypto is a global thing. So let's take a look at Ethereum, okay? Ethereum is the second most decentralized blockchain after Bitcoin, of course. And why is that? Well, they've been out for the longest, guys. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's probably safe to say Bitcoin has a lot more miners in the ecosystem, but that's a little bit of a weird case too, because they're all centralized in only a couple of mining pools. And a lot of these mining pools are in China, but let's just give Bitcoin the award. Okay, let's just say because Bitcoin's been out 14 years, it gets to be number one most decentralized. That's fine. But, you know, things don't happen overnight. So, you know, Ethereum comes along and Ethereum is eight years old, almost nine years old at this point. And we're looking at almost a million validators, 975,000. Look, 975,643 total validators. So Ethereum is going to come in at number two when it comes to the most decentralized blockchains. That's a lot of validators. You know, good luck shutting all those off. Okay, Ethereum... Uh, really paved the way for a lot of other blockchains, Polchain especially, you know, being a fork of Ethereum 2.0. Let's take a look at some other popular blockchains that you might be into. You might have heard about them. Okay, Avalanche over here is sitting at a measly 1,469. Not a whole lot, right? It's kind of surprising how far behind a lot of these chains are compared to Ethereum. And Avalanche, yeah, it's newer, but it's not new. Okay, I think a lot of these chains have been out three or four or five years now. Uh, and nobody's even close to really beating the contender of Ethereum right now in terms of decentralization. So you got Avalanche, 1,469, kind of meh. Solana, the golden boy that every VC is into, the every mainstream influencer, they love Solana, right? You got people like Altcoin Daily, every single video, every, every single interview. Hey, what do you think about Solana? You know, it's like, tell me you got a bag without telling me you got a bag. This is a mainstream non-contrarian play in crypto Solana, but it's the golden boy. Basically, everybody lost money on it with the FTX collapse because it was linked to Sam Bankman fried but they're not ready to give up, okay? They want to revive it because they want new people to exit on. And Solana's not my favorite. You know, it goes down all the time. The technology is just not there. And let's look at the decentralization. Not even 2,000, 1,989 validators. Not looking great for Solana. I mean, for being a couple of years old, you'd think they could scrape together more than this uh, really, I mean, nobody cares about that, though. People are just trying to exit. VCs just want to dump Solana. Uh, it, it's no longer the contrarian play. And when everybody agrees, everyone's holding the same bags and praying for the next bull. They got their chain link, their Solana, their uni token. I think a lot of these are played out. Okay, but let's not, this isn't going to be a Solana slam fest. All right, let's go to Polygon. A lot of people like Polygon. Look, Polygon is only 100 validators securing the network. We can look at the actual data on the blockchain as well. Uh, let's see, 105. So not a whole lot of decentralization there, right? There's the meme that, you know, a lot of uh, Polygon is basically run by a couple of those devs in India and really 105 validators. I mean, the people running these 105 validators, they make the rules and it's often the same group of four or five real individuals behind everything. When you're looking for decentralization, you know, Polygon is not it. Okay, let's talk about optimism. Optimism has tried to catch on to the hot new L2 narrative. We'll see how long those L2 narratives last because when it comes to decentralization, they're the exact opposite. Look, optimism is run by a single operator. It even tells you verbatim on the website, the system has a centralized operator. They're not trying to hide this, folks. They're not trying to hide this. They have given up on centralization for you know the illusion of user experience and for cheap and fast. But you know if you want what blockchains were originally meant for, censorship-resistant money, 
censorship resistance is the only reason blockchains were invented. And you're not going to get that with optimism when a single special boy has all the powers and can propose all the blocks. So we've gone from 1,000 to 1. Hell, I mean, it's making Solana look good all right, in terms of decentralization. One operator, just, just be wary a lot of these L2s. They have, you know, one, maybe anywhere from like 1 to 12 operators, and they're all owned by just a couple of guys. So let's get back to, you know, a real blockchain. Cardano, everybody loves Cardano, right? Cardano is one of the popular ones. It's, it's one that's safe to talk about that nobody really feels very controversial on. Everyone loves Charles Hoskinson. And we've got 3,128 validators. Look right here, 3,128. Still more than Solana and Avalanche, maybe even combined. That's okay, I'm not mad about that. But we've got one option that not a lot of people realize. That's got 45,813 validators and counting every single day. Guys, this one's only five months old and it's called Pulse Chain. Okay, it's a fork of Ethereum 2.0, cheaper, faster. It even copied all the coins from Ethereum. So people, some people are calling it the world's biggest airdrop. But 45,813 validators after five months of existence. I mean, out of everything else, like it's not even a competition. Ethereum, okay, Ethereum is very successful. We got to give props to Ethereum. But we've got, what is that? I mean, if we're on the same trajectory as Ethereum over the next few years, I mean, Ethereum has had nine years to exist to get to that almost 1 million. Once it cracks that 1 million, that'll be pretty cool. But guys, the only serious contender I see right now for decentralization, a real censorship resistant blockchain is Pulse Chain with real people, real validators, real individuals all over the globe. These aren't in the USA. A lot of them are, but a lot of them are in China, Australia, Europe, Africa, South America, you name it. I mean, you can even look at the globe. Let's show the globe right here. Look at this globe. Look at, I can swing the globe around. Beautiful guys, beautiful. Look at all these nodes everywhere. You got some guy up in Alaska over there validating the ecosystem, making it safer, secure, more protected from attacks. You got China, you got, you got some guys over in India. You got East and West Europe. Looks like Pulse Chain doesn't discriminate. Looks like Pulse Chain is not a political event. Looks like it doesn't play sides. It looks like it doesn't have an agenda. It's not left or right. Guys, these are people that like freedom of speech, that just want to run their own validator. Look at Australia. We got a guy, a node over in New Zealand over there. Good for that guy. And South America, let's not forget. Don't see any in Antarctica yet. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. But these are people that are choosing to run the software voluntarily to help decentralize the network because they believe in freedom of speech. They believe in real DeFi. And they want to be able to build and transact freely, which is happening right now on Pulse Chain, whereas a lot of other stuff is coming out as fake DeFi. They're bending the knee to the government. Things like Uniswap X, you know, with a KYC switch, charging you fees now, manually blocking coins from the front end. It's not a good look for a lot of these once decentralized DeFi entities that are bending the knee and moving on that spectrum to the centralized point of view, which again is the opposite of why crypto was created, right? Let's look at even the Bitcoin mining pools over here. Look at Bitcoin mining, guys. You've got basically you've got two or three or four mining pools that collectively own 75% of the mining. Look, you got Foundry USA, which is a newcomer. So, and then you got Ant Pool as well. It looks like the USA wanted to get its fingers into Bitcoin. So as of recently, they looks like they locked down just over 25% of the total mining power in the world. But think about it, guys. I don't want to try to scare anybody and talk about imaginary horribles, but it really wouldn't be that hard. For Ant Pool, F2 Pool, Binance, and Via BTC, these are all Asian. Okay, a lot of these are Chinese. A lot of these are Asian. A lot of these don't share the same interests as America. And miners can collude to change the state of the network, regardless of what the USA thinks. Okay, even though they bought their way in to you know over 25% of the hash rate in Bitcoin, does this really look that centralized? Sure, there might be millions of miners, but when they pool together like this, you run the risk of miner collusion. And socially enforced networks, you know, can always vote at a later time to change the state of the network. People say it'll never happen, and it might not. It might not happen for 10, 20, 30 years, but just saying it's a possibility. So that's how centralized your blockchains are, okay? That's how centralized your blockchains are. Now, now you might be thinking to yourself, well, that blockchain's not decentralized. Look at how many coins are owned by the top 100 addresses. And guess what, guys? You could say that literally about every single one of these blockchains. I could break down the total coin holders, and show you that the top 100 addresses in all these blockchains are held by a very, very small minority of people. Let's look at Bitcoin again. You can Google Bitcoin rich list. Do it with me. Bitcoin rich list right there. Click on bit info charts and we can see the top holders of Bitcoin right here. What's this? What's this? Let's look right here, guys. Let's look at this line and lower. Let's look at this line 
and lower. Why am I picking this line right here? Look below this line, okay? The percentage of coins owned by 2% of addresses, look at this, 2% of addresses owns 92.8% of all Bitcoin in 2% of addresses. Cumulative, okay? I mean, look, it gets even worse. The top 0.3% of Bitcoin owns 80% of the coins. And when we go to 2%, it goes up to 92% of total coins. So people that cry and scream, oh, it's your coin so centralized. If you're talking about economic centralization, we got to be honest here, guys. We got to admit, this is true with every single blockchain. Bitcoin is no different. Ethereum is no different. How many coins does Vitalik hold in Ethereum? I'm not going to look it up right now, but it's probably a large majority of the Ethereum foundation. So this whole centralization narrative, I really want to define it for you guys, that technical decentralization is not the same as economic decentralization. Number of nodes is more important than who owns more coins than who and tracking everybody's money. All right. Now, thanks for sticking till the end of the video because I want to show you a really cool update that Richard Hart just dropped regarding Hex. Okay. Just dropped this a couple of weeks ago. We're going to talk about alternative Hex front ends. So well, Pulse Chain itself is incredibly decentralized. You know, 45,000 validators. Look at that nice shiny globe. It's also decentralized on the Hex front end side. Okay, so if you want to run the Hex protocol, there are a ton of different websites you can go to. They're all listed right here for you. I like this one, app.icosa.pro, because you get bonus coins. But look, if one of these front ends goes down, you're able to access the decentralized Hex smart contract from any one of these websites, because that's all, that's all a website is. It's a front end. It's a UI, a user interface. And a front end is just a different portal to access the smart contract, which is the back end. Okay. So when you're using Hex, you're using a smart contract. And these websites are just the, like the windows that lets you view into the data and write to the smart contract and stake your Hex and unstake your Hex. But on top of that, Richard Hart just dropped this over here. These are very important. Pay attention. There's an IPFS link right now that stands for Interplanetary File System. Sounds pretty cool, right? It is really cool, guys. It is really cool. It's a new type of internet, essentially. It's a new type of internet routing protocol where instead of HTTPS, okay, you can actually just have an IPFS website. You can go here and you can either host your own IPFS server or you can connect to somebody else like Cloudflare. And you can just go to this website or type this code exactly directly into any IPFS browser. This code right here, the part that begins with Q and ends in R, okay? And this provides even more protection. What this does is it makes Hex extremely resilient from attacks because even if the internet were to go down on the HTTPS side, even if the TCP IP protocol that 99% of people on the internet use were to go down or get censored, you know, maybe there's corruption over at the internet service providers. Well, we've got a brand new IPFS link over here. And this is all cryptographically secured. Okay, you really can't shut down IPFS as long as somebody wants to run the IPFS software. If you run your own IPFS node, you can always access the IPFS data that runs the Hex smart contract. Guys, here's one more thing. Pretty badass over here. Pretty cool. You can download go.hex.com locally. Just go to the GitLab and check out the Pulse Chain GitLab. There's new Hex server releases. So in the worst case scenario, what would that be? I don't know. Solar flare, magnetic pole shift reversal, meteor hits the earth. Maybe a couple of us managed to make it to the Rockies in a bunker. And maybe somehow the internet still is alive. Maybe there's some satellites. Yeah, I'm being tongue in cheek here. But if something really bad were to happen to the internet and maybe the power were to go out for two weeks, well, while society is collapsing and everybody's fighting out there, you can be in your bunker and you can download your hack staking software on your local computer right here. Download it now so that you don't have to worry about it when the apocalypse comes. Okay, but this is about as resilient and decentralized as you can get. I don't know any other smart contract front end that has a downloadable server that you can access the smart contract from an IPFS endpoint, allowing you to access it outside of the typical internet protocol, plus all these alternate front ends. Guys, Hex is the right way. True decentralization, real DeFi. And of course, if you want to buy Hex on any Ethereum DEX, I've been a big fan of CowSwap lately because they have gasless transactions. You don't even need gas money to buy Hex on Ethereum. And Pulse Chain, of course, has a ton of options and building every single day. Obviously, check out app.pulsex.com to fork of Uniswap v2 without censorship, without selling out, without manual gatekeeping. It's the way crypto is supposed to be done right. So when it comes to decentralization, I hope you learned a little bit about what's real decentralization versus what's kind of decentralization theater. And of course, check out these new links for Hex, which makes Hex probably the most impervious to attack when it comes to decentralized smart contracts.
this IPFS link or the local hex.com download. It's about as safe and secure and decentralized as it gets. If you found this valuable, like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, share the video. If you're brand new to crypto and none of this made any sense to you, I've got a course that takes you from zero to hero. Link in the description below. I'll teach you everything I know at a very, very affordable price. You can be confident in navigating crypto and pulse chain. So thanks. I'll see you on the next one.